Do you have my credit card in my pocket? Yo, what's up? <laughs> hey, we're waiting. We got a few people logging on here. So, you guys logging on? Yo, what's up? We're waiting, we're waiting. We got people coming on now. It's filling up. What's up? Howard Patterson. Maverick. Jerebeck. RG Trembley. Atomic Dom. Ryan Day. <laughs> so basically it's what happened here. Uh, I, found, I got into Haley's uh, weaves. So found a hairpiece. <laughs> It's not a hairpiece, it's a halo. <laughs> See? It's, it's just a clip-on, dude. So basically, I, they made me do this commercial. They made me, like, read this infomercial where I had to, like, say these lines. And it was about a sale going on at 420 for um, four-wheel parts. It's like, 420, there's... Oh, we got a sale. I'm like, dude, there's no way I can be serious about the 420 post. <laughs> so, uh... They're, uh, it's a cyber sale on 420, which I don't know. I think that's Monday or something. But um, anyway, we came on tonight. We kind of told everyone, you know, last night that we were going to answer some questions. So if you guys want to uh, plug away, well, you know, between Haley here and myself, if you guys have any questions upon, we were trying to cover relationship, which kind of is, very vague, right? So it, it could be like any type of relationship, like boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, um, relationship with your dad, mom, kids. Um, if you guys want to answer some questions, we're not perfect by no means you at it. You my $250 weave on the floor? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? You just shit. set it in the dirt? I look how shaggy that thing is. You realize this comes out of my bank account, my personal money, the thing of race expense? There it is, look at that. So just when you think, just when you think oh things are getting real, then a girl pulls her hair weave off, all right? Oh my God. <laughs> so just when you thought you really knew her, then her hair falls off. Uh, her let's hair see, falls who, off. it's 1122 in Australia, what's up? So anyway, guys, Two in the morning. You guys want to sit and chit chat or what's up? Joe's soccer. Since we were talking about relationships. Haley, how you doing? <laughs> Joe said, how you doing? Send um, in applications. <laughs> when, did, when did I get married? Tito said. Uh, it was around 2000. No, what was it? <laughs> <Touching> it was <laughs> no, 21, 22 years ago, I'd say. So do the math. Um, <laughs> no, it was actually, yeah, around 20. 17. 17, 18 years ago, around 18, 19 years ago. <laughs> Somewhere, it's almost been two decades. Let's just say that. Um, it's about 8.30 p.m. I'm in 18. Alabama. Haley is 18. Uh, says, are you with Metal Militia? <laughs> yeah, still own the company. So, yeah, we still own it. Um, Matthew Sparks, what's up? Uh, what's up? You should... Uh, Make Danger Boy straw hats. We thought about it. Here's the problem with the merch thing. If we go out and make a ton of different items, which I've done before with like militia and different companies, here's my little tip with uh, building brands and building products. If you overextend yourself and you build a bunch of product, you have to pay for that and you have to stock your shelves or stock your room, right? So you, if you make these weird products that you think, oh, this is gonna do great and you stray off of what the norm is, you usually lose you end up eating that product, just so you know. I've been in the clothing thing a long time and I see that happen a lot. So that's my advice on that. So we don't like to take too many crazy chances. Um, who's better, you or Travis Pastrana? It depends at What's what. What's a good age for marriage, someone said. Finally, someone with a good relationship question. Let me, where'd you find that? Keep going. What is oh, no, uh, was, John Doe? Yeah. Good age for marriage, from my opinion, as, as a 45 year old guy who's been married for a couple decades, to be honest, I was late 20s, and I think that's probably right. Late 20s for a guy, maybe late 20s, maybe 30 is probably that time, in my opinion. Um, 
So what do you think as a girl? When's a girl feel like they need to get married? Not need to get, well, it depends like what you're doing. If you have stuff going on in your life or if you're depending on a guy, it depends, it's different. So if you're depending on a guy, you gotta hurry that stuff up. <laughs> gotta put a ring on it. <laughs> but if, I mean, if you have your own stuff going for you, like if you have your own career and like income, stuff like that, you don't have to rely on that. You can wait as long as you want. Yeah, so girls are a little different because they like biological click clock starts ticking and um so that does um, i can't speak for girls really too much but just from what i've seen matthew sparks what's up um uh, i got married at 23 nate um what happened to last year's bike mechanic i ain't gonna get into that but um you're you right know. you do speak before like you actually think about yeah what yeah <laughs> but it's all good now i want people to hear the questions yeah. people are able to read yeah. it at the end of the day I'll be honest, most people that work for us last about two years. Everyone knows because guess what? We are, eight, eight I know, I know. <laughs> we are very, very high pace. We are wide open. That's why you guys probably are interested in watching us because we do so many different things and we are at such a high pace every day. We don't take hardly any days off. Um, so that burns people out, you know, and, and that not everyone can hang with our pace. And I'm not saying that's the case for every situation, but most people only last about two years that, that work for us um, because they just, we wear them out as a family because all of us are competing in sports and it's a lot of work. It just is. So it's, uh, some guys last longer than others and you know, it's all good. I have respect for everyone that's ever worked for us and helped us because they were, they're a piece to our puzzle. That's what I always say. We have so many pieces to the puzzle of our family and, um, the with with being successful there's a lot of people that help you get there it's not just oh it's one sponsor that paid for it no it's not it's a million different pieces and every mechanic was a part of that um so i want to say what's up to brenda antle is back what's up deegan's what's your opinions on the most important aspect of relationship thanks for the thanks for the question communication um, if you're both not on the same page it's never going to work you're both going in different directions yeah. See, there goes one of our employees now. He's quit. He's I'm kidding. <laughs> he did it. He's actually lasted the longest He's out the of everyone. He's the longest person that's ever lasted here. He's been with us, I don't know, what, five years now? Mm -hmm. So he's um, he's our filmer guy and a video guy. He's Obviously, we've, he's done a good job with that. And you... He, People have to know... Where, know your position, right? I'm not being know rude on that. Know your place. Know your place. Hey, this is your place. I don't get, mind people getting, going, getting ahead. I don't know, I mind people being successful through me and meeting people and, and making things happen. Just don't double cross us. That's my biggest pet peeve. If I can't, you do something wait, where- Wait, I like this question right you here. Do I wanna answer that one. If you do something where I can't trust you, no, then wait, 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 that's a big problem, okay? I don't, we don't deal with that very long. So what is your, what was the question? We're gonna get to you here, Brenda, so hang I on. I talked about it, it's What's communication. It? Communication. Most, most important aspect of relationship is communication it is and it's trust but trust builds over time because everyone's going to mess up right you're always going to break that trust here or there uh, with mistakes and but it's having that open relationship where you can talk about it and be like man i did i did screw up it took me so long to eventually be okay with saying sorry because i was always right i'd be like nah i don't even care i don't even care like i just let it ride because i was so stubborn at some point, I was like, now I have kids. I have to show it. It's okay to say sorry and move on. That doesn't make you weak. That makes you actually stronger because you're like, hey, I, can, I know I made a mistake. Now I'm moving on with that. Okay, I'm going to learn from it move on. Um, what was the one question? Uh, no, it was the one about this. I think it was a guy asked if he should let his 12-year-old daughter date. I that Coming from growing up, like I guess just being that age not too long ago, since I'm 18 now, no. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> but what is dating? That's the question to you, okay? I know you asked that question. Is it okay for your 12-year-old daughter to date? When I don't know what that means, what you're saying there. I think of if having a serious relationship with a boy, no. You date to get okay? married. No, right? That's. I am basing all this off my... my uh, my life, right? My, my mistakes and my like, successes. If that's what I'm kind of basing this off. And I'm going to have to say it. I base everything off. Let's base it off our, you know, like I said, it's off the Bible. That's 
if we're basing out which you should be because it never really steers you wrong, um, no, I think 12 year olds is, is too young. You can be friends, right? You can be friends. I see like going, like, if you're going to like the mall together, going out to eat together, like going, like, keep in mind, you have to have your parents drive you everywhere when you're that young dating. <laughs> I feel like anything under 16 is just unnecessary. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. I know you're having crushes when you're like, young. Oh, I like him or her or whatever. And then, um, but it's okay to be like that. It's okay to have that youthful, like, love and try to figure things out. But as far as having serious relationships, I, I think that's way too young. Um, okay, we got Oscar Bain. What's up? We got, uh, let's see, sorry. Um, Florida man, my dad. Oh, this is a tough one. I live with some other hard to create connections with people. It's so easy to create connections with people because of social media and yeah. like having a phone, you get it kind of breaks that kind of barrier. It's easy to meet people nowadays. Yeah, so have, Florida you know, man, I agree with Haley saying, he said, you said your mom passed at 14, uh, and your uh, dad passed at 14, and mom abandoned at 15, and you live with your friends. The thing is, uh, that's a gnarly situation, okay? My mom left me at 12, so I kind of can vibe with you a little bit on that. Um, but the thing is, is you have to, you're, you're still a human, you're still a person, you still, it's time to, to move on and seek you know, relationships with cool people, interesting people, you know, it's okay to, to, um, now there's an easier way to meet people. Yeah. It's on phones. Like right now I'm able to talk to over a thousand people. Boom. Like that. I couldn't do that when I was young. Like when my, when I was younger, my mom bailed and I was frustrated and everything. My dad was at work. I didn't get to get on social and talk to anyone. I got to talk to my brother, or talk to some friends at school. And that was very, very small group. So, you know, there's a lot more uh, access to people now. And, uh, and uh, it's okay. Counseling's okay. Mentors are okay. That's okay. It shouldn't be a bad thing, okay? Like, I've, dude, I've had counseling. I've had mentors. I've had people guide me in the right, to try to help me guide in the right directions when I had to try to figure things out. So I'm telling you, it's not a bad thing to, to seek that. That's, um, so is it bad to see each other too much in a relationship? No. Uh, John Doe. <laughs> Good questions. Um, it depends, right? When you're young, you kind of feel like, oh, I have to spend every moment with the person you like. Um, well, you don't know what day is going to be your last. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think as a guy, you can get smothered. You can get, you can get smothered by someone and, um. That's it, communication, being on the same page. Yeah, I think. Mean, you know, everyone has different limits of how much they want to, you know, be be around each other. And it, yeah, I get it. There's the honeymoon stage where you're, everyone's all excited and, and then everything, you want to be around each other all the time. And then you slowly start, you know, making time for other things. I feel like if your relationship detours you from your goals and detours you from, you know, being successful in life and, and, and focusing on the good things in life, I think that's not good. I think your relationship should help lift and help you get to your goals. If you can find that, that's a good relationship, okay? And you help them with their goals too. It can't always be about one person's deal either. Um, saying, guys, I mean, um, so are you, I'm not gonna, like I said, I base everything off the Bible. That's where I come from. So you, you guys know what that means. Um, uh, she, how should you be to your girlfriend, Ridge Jones? I don't get that. I'm not sure what you mean. Nice. Be, what's the word? Um, I mean, it's I. So empathy. You have to be like, stop being so like, put up this brick wall of like this hard, tough guy. It's like, eh, eh, eh. no one likes that. No one likes cocky people. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, no, I get it. You, you got to be a guy. You got to be someone that's. You guys can communicate. You got to open up and be, even though it's hard for, it was hard for me, but you got to be able to communicate. It says, my dad and I have nothing in common. I want to ride dirt bikes, but he won't let me because he lost his friends. And it's not into them. Connor K, so you're saying, uh, you're saying your dad. Hey, wait, I like the. Uh, dad and I have nothing in common. And you want to ride dirt bikes. That's a tough one, but like my dad did not was not into dirt bikes at all. Like, and, and my neighbor got me into it and, um, I worked hard. I saved up enough money to buy an old dirt bike and I just worked on it all the time. And, and my dad eventually saw my passion for it and he ended up supporting me through that. Okay. So yeah, I don't like my dad didn't get me into racing, you know? Um, so you, you know, like I said, you show your parents what your passion is and people, I think they will, 
respect that, you know? And so, hey, you can't. This is something I learned a long time ago. You cannot pick your parents. You can't pick them. You can't pick your genetics. You can't pick that. You know what I'm saying? You got to deal with the hand you were given. Like I so, have man um, arms and they won't go away. <laughs> no matter how much I work out. <laughs> Kelly Morley says... Um, um, so, no, it's not bad to seek help. No, I, dude, I seek help all the time. If I'm having a frustrating day, I call my friends that I met at the church and there's some dudes that we click pretty good. It took time to find these guys. And, um, you know, I found them through social media, or through going to the church and, um, and we talked, you know, I've had friends from when I grew up that I can say anything to. And no, I, and, and I've gone to, dude, I've gone, I've gone to men's Bible study at, you know, and I've gone to men's groups and I'm embarrassed. I walk in, I don't know anyone. And, and I'm like embarrassed when I go on the first time, but eventually I build a, a repertoire with these people and I'm able to talk to them. And I, I had to seek that out, okay? It's not gonna come to you. If you need help, seek it out. There's nothing wrong with it anymore. Like nowadays, it's not a big deal. Um, uh, Brenton Gardner says, uh, there was another good question, but you guys, I missed it. You might have to I ask I like that you. one. Haley, what would your ideal boyfriend be? Okay, so I get asked this a lot. So I, <laughs> I get a lot of people who ask me, they're like, you don't want to date someone in the racing world or whatever, or be with someone in the racing world because, like, uh, that's what you're around all the time. And but in my eyes, I love racing. I love talking to people who like racing and want to talk about racing because that's my passion. It's what I love to do. And anytime, for some reason, whenever I talk to someone or even try to have a conversation with people away from racing that don't understand racing, it's like it's almost frustrating because they don't understand what you're talking about. So that's why, like. I'd say I would like to be with the racer guy, but at the end of the day, 99% of them are not the best guys out there. <laughs> racer guys, I don't know. Maybe it's just stock car guys. They're not not the greatest. Yeah. It's, I mean, they're a lot better than moto guys. No, 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 no. See, but these ones have money. Yeah. These ones have money and no work ethic. At least moto guys have some type of work ethic. Yeah, yeah. And abs. But yeah. like, <laughs> we got dad bods and yeah. dad's money. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Well, there's, I mean, there's a good, the goods and the bads for sure. Uh, there was another good question here. What's up, Jace Vaughn? I had, you had a, William Vanaman, Vanaman. Uh, where do you draw the line on being a be a friend and being a father? So this is something that it's always been tough because I like to hang out with my kids. We like to do the same sports. Um, so that's a friendship basis. But number one, what's more important than me trying to ex be accepted from my kids as being cool and being a friend is being a dad and being a father because there has to be morals and respect and things that I grew up, hey, I grew up and made a lot of mistakes. I don't want to see my kids make those mistakes. So I'm trying to be a dad before I'm being a friend. And I think that's more, that's, that's more respectful way of going about it, okay? It's, um, it, I'm not going to go super deep into that, but that's kind of the way I see it. Um, recognizing, uh, what's up, John Rice, Rick Hall, Brian? <sighs> Let's see. Someone told me to stop biting my nails. I know. <laughs> that I know. Um, Jeremy Mullen. Um, yeah, I agree. I bite. I bite my nail. I'm like bad. I touch. I bite my nails. I'm always itching my nails. I always feel like I have a nervous habit. Uh, but um, yeah, I gotta stop. I probably put a mask on. It'd be harder to do that. Uh, you want to hear something I did that was really dumb oh, today? Oh, this is a good story. <laughs> I, dude, don't ask me why. I had a pencil, a brand new pencil this morning. Um, let's see. Uh, so um, I had to sorry I was reading this comment that was pretty good um, so I had a pencil in my a pencil and I was inching my ear with a pencil okay with a new eraser the eraser in my ear and I the phone ring or the doorbell ring and I turned real quick and I jammed the pencil all the way in my ear and, uh, and my ear just starts pouring blood out of it I probably still have like there's still blood chunks coming out of it but that was very dumb today of me to do that it hurts i was like oh i felt like someone punched me in the ear so anyway back to relationships um brian do you encourage your cure i'm just so grouse gross is that your name brian do you encourage your kids to follow the bible when they become independent yeah. the bottom line with that is you know i grew up in a catholic church my dad took us to church on sundays we didn't really sit down as a as a group and read the bible we did pray before dinner um you know uh one of the things that hit me pretty hard is when people said, have you ever seen your dad kneeling at 
in praying? Have you ever seen your dad at the bed praying in the morning and praying at night? Have you ever seen, you know, your dad reading the Bible on his own or praying on his own? Those are heavy things later as you become a parent. And um, yes, you try to instill these things in your kids at a young age that, hey, I get it. You, to become a teenager, and most kids wander. They're, they're curious. They want to see what life has to offer. And, um, and those things do steer you away, but the goal is they always come back, right? It's the story of the prodigal son. Look at your um, wife doing cartwheels. That, <laughs> that uh, sorry, Maurice is over here I'm doing cartwheels. <laughs> um, so anyway, Someone it's Joe's soccer. It's a $5 application fee. It's not Joe Stalker, is it? Whoa, wait. It's Joe we'll Stalker. All right. Um, anyway, so that's that. Yes, you always want them to come back. You got to build found Any good foundation is what you start with, and that's what people can always, if they drift, they come back. Um, uh, Victor Deshini, what's up? I don't know anything about NHRA. Sorry, I'm not sure about that one. Um uh, let's see, wife going to work. Uh, uh, let's see, yeah, there was a pretty long one here that I was trying to check out. Being a good racer is a very vain person in most cases, and that doesn't lead to being equals with another very well. Yes, you're around the rich kids of the family is trying to... Yeah, I get it. There, there is. I agree, Jim Haynes. There, there, I'm trying to understand your question, but yes, it's it's hard because... Hey, we go to the off, uh, stock car track and we feel like, man, everyone, these parents have a ton of money and their kids are, you know, they're basically have, you know, basically these good equipment and good cars because the parents can afford it. It's just fine. No big, like, I'm not mad at that, but it is a different world of trying to like, okay, build relationships with that, with the different style of people, which is fine. I have nothing against it, but people have looked at us like that too. And, um, the end of the day, I've always tried to teach my kids work ethic, even though they do have a lot of nice things, you know, uh, we always try to teach them work ethic and the foundation of faith. That's my, my opinion. Like I said, this is, I'm no master of relationships. I'm just telling you what was worked for me in, in our family. That's, that's it. Um, what court kind of Jacob said, Oh Matt, doing relationship questions. Is it okay? That's a hard one. Uh, John Doe is asking, are you reading these from a book? Because these are all like professional <laughs> questions. <laughs> he looks like is it okay to forgive room. if people cheat? I'd say if you're, if that's a tough one, you got every example is probably a little different. Every relationship's different. You know, uh, I'd say if for me, if you're a believer, you're supposed to forgive everyone no matter what of everything. But I mean, marriage is a different case. Okay. You're, 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 uh, I feel like when you have kids involved, kids come first and then you come second. And that's just my opinion with marriage. So if something does happen within a marriage like that, I, I'm, I, I don't even want to go there. But at the end of the day, I get it. I get what you're saying. I think, I think you do forgive. And I think that's the way it is. Um, I know it's, that's a tough one to touch with. Or does Hayden to, have a girlfriend? No. Does uh, Tom <laughs> Cosgrove, <laughs> does Hayden have a girlfriend? <laughs> No, he doesn't. I don't. Not that I know of. Um, <laughs> Jamie Manley says, "Do you recommend it? Recommend your kids to date pe people?" No, I don't recommend <laughs> them to date people. I grew up around you in race cars all my life. It's in the veins. It's in my blood. So I can't stop racing. Okay. Uh, it's new merch. New Haley merch just dropped. Haley B. The way. Yeah, Haley. We just yeah just came out with some new merch for Haley. So her new designs with the number four. Uh, uh, Nicholas Wal Walpole. You have booger in your nose. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, I am. So you gotta date someone that's okay with saying you have a booger in your nose. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a test. Okay. That um, cracks me up. You know those girls that I'm feel 30, like they can't wear makeup around um, like guys. That I've stuff makes married. me mad. I'm thirty. Well, Haley, you get a tattoo. Ooh. It's not a relationship question. <laughs> <laughs> so i um, Matt Boblitz. I'm 30 and I've been married 12 years and it's the best decision of my life. That's good. Good for you. What's wrong with the dad bod? <laughs> okay, if you, here's my take on this. If you are 20 years old, good health, have no problems that 
stray you away from being healthy, living an active lifestyle. If you are 20 with a dad bod and have time on your hands, don't really have it's a racing career. Racing is a job, but it a lot of these guys take it as a weekend job and do nothing the rest of the week. If you are not in shape in your prime 20 years and you think you're going to be over here pulling these girls, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. So here's the deal: as I got older in life, if two two men came to me or women, whatever, came to me and said, hey, I, I want to apply for the job that you're uh, promoting right now. And I said, okay. And I look at two guys, and they come up. One's out of shape, and the other one's in shape. I'm going to look at the one and say, this guy in shape probably has a better work ethic. My opinion, okay? That's my opinion. And you got to think, because you, your physical appearance and the way you respect your body and you uh, treat your health does kind of as your first appearance of like, and I'm not saying about, oh, is this a better guy, a nicer guy, this, that. I'm just saying that's my opinion because I've been around sports all my life, okay? And I know, I'm just saying, if you have the chance to be in shape and be healthy, I think my opinion is you do that because you want to live longer and be there for your kids and be there, live a healthy life. That's, that's um, my opinion. So... How hard do you think? Oh, what's up, Marcus Scott from New Zealand? Um, I like racing trophy trucks. How come Haley don't have a boyfriend? No one has lived Haley up to had my a BF best friend. Yeah, right. How come? I have a guy best friend. Cool <laughs> kids. <laughs> He's like my brother. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he does. Um, I think the deal with um, I think the deal with Haley and, and boyfriends. You gotta think. We've had these talks, like the end of the day is she's on a road that's very narrow, right? Like the, be a girl to actually make it in NASCAR. In, in, like size double zero skinny narrow jeans. <laughs> yeah, like, like super very, let's just be honest. You know, it's very, very, very tough road to make it to NASCAR and race cup and be competitive, okay? So I always say, here's now listen to this. I'm going to drop it on you. I always, this is my words of advice. If you pull something into your life and you have your goal, say your goals right here, you have your goal and you pull something into your life. If that something is not going to help you get to this goal, that's so important and it's going to bring you over here, then here, then why do it? Why do it? Because you have a chance to be something so great and not just, oh, you're going to make so much money. It's not about that. At the end of the day, it's about becoming a voice and it being something that can be someone that can change lives and have such a voice that transcends the sport, such as, uh, you know, like say Michael Jordan or someone that's, you know, a positive influence that has transcended, has been a voice for the world. Like when he speaks, people listen. And so that, I mean, imagine Haley being able to make that one day and influence, you know, say young girls to come up and be competitive, you know, uh, you know, influence, um, you know, people to go out and, and work hard and accomplish their goals. And so that's my opinion on it. But hey, there may be, there may be guys out there that are going to be the perfect fit that are going to help her become a better racer and help her get, you know, to her goals. I don't know. I just yet to see it, but um, you never know, right? Never know. Um, let's see who else. What do we got? It says, hey, Australia. We have V8 supercars. I race some V8 supercars on the sim, and you drive on the right side instead. And oh my god, I couldn't even. It took me seven tries to make it through the first corner. <laughs> also, I was going like 180. So. Yeah, those cars are awesome, and <laughs> those drivers so are really good. Mm -hmm. um, okay, John Russell. This is kind of getting off relationship a little bit, but we want to stick on that one. Um, are you open? Are you not afraid of what possibly happened to your sons when they're in a race? Is that, is that a real question? Like, I'm a dad, okay? I'm scared when my kids jump their bicycle on ramps in my yard, okay? But my level of fear is probably different than most people's. I don't, I'm not as, I'm more scared for Hudson than I am Hayden. And Hayden goes twice as fast as Hudson. The reason I'll explain that is Hayden has a lot of bike skill and he's put a lot of time in. Hudson has not put in so much time, so he makes me nervous because the risk of injury is much higher. And so, yes, I'm very nervous. I'm very nervous when Hayden races. At any minute, he could have a very, very bad crash. The sport scares me to death, 100%. I, I, that's 100%. But as a dad, I see their passion for it, and I see Hayden possibly being one of the best. And, and it's a challenge for him, a challenge for him. So I like to see the work ethic that comes with it. 
Yes. Um, yes, I'm very scared. When, when Haley goes 190 in a race car, yeah, I'm scared for sure, 100%. Um, and <laughs> it says, where, what are some... advise you guys on that so don't hold me to anything with money um what do you think uh i'm not gonna i'm saying i'm talking we're talking relationships okay so if you're gonna ask a moto question i'm probably not gonna answer it uh so really is there no audio no it's just that one person your sound is do we have audio um uh... so what's up what is the windbreaker made out of? Is windbreaker material that like thin windbreaker material? Uh, do you think uh, so audio? Let's see. Ooh, I don't know. How hey, can you hear me? Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I Got it. you. Uh, who won Haley's fire suit? I don't, know, right I don't know. There's we're picking manager, a winner. My uh, manager, he already picked a uh, winner. Uh, so how think it would be? How hard do you think it would be to keep a relationship during a racing season? Well, Nathan? it depends if the other person's racing too. Depends. I don't know. Maybe if you're both at the racetrack, it's just like then you end up wrecking them, and it's like. <laughs> <laughs> So imagine how hard that is, to be honest, if you're racing with, like, the person you're dating. That'd be kind of weird. No, imagine if you're, yeah, like, so you picture, like, your girlfriend, and usually it's, like, guys are all manly, and they want to be, like, the like, upper, like, the upper dog. Like, that's, like, how do you, what's the word for that? It's, like, how guys just want to, they want to be, like, the, the man in the relationship. Center of attention, uh -huh. yeah. And when this girl comes over here and starts beating them, things, they start getting not jealous, but, like, they put that guard up, and they kind of lose that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a weird deal. I mean, because the guy's always kind of used to being the center of attention. It's kind of weird when the girl's probably gets more attention. So your guy has to be okay with that. And if you have any problems or breakup, do you really want to go and see that person every weekend and every week? That's my biggest uh, um, words of advice. If you're going to date someone, be okay with that person if you ever break up. That you're going to, if you're going to see them every day or every weekend, just think about that, okay? If you're usually when you break up, you don't want to see that person anymore, okay? That's like how the game usually works. Um, Andrew Ellis, how did you choose your wife? She I don't know. Me. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd say, yeah. I, honestly, I'm going to be honest. Like, I would say it was probably right off the bat off looks. Like, right off the bat. Like, that's. Mom was really good looking. That's she how, still is good looking. Yeah, she has a young. good body. She, she was works pretty. Out really hard. I came from Nebraska. E there was very slim pickings <laughs> and i do i came to cali my first few my first year in cali i was like dude blown away by all the pretty girls and um California and she, girls yeah and she just... was one of them and that was it and then i but let's be honest okay i've i have traveled the world i've gone to a lot of events i've been you know the, the heights of stardom to whatever okay and i've met a lot of people met a lot of girls right across the world i met do i want i like that question the do i want girls. that's i mean this is probably getting a little too deep but i've met a lot of girls you know thousands thousands okay and in through my sports from for whatever reason though she was the one that out of all the girls that i liked him and that after a week or two i wasn't like dude this chick's bugging like you know like so she was the one that i kept thinking about and the one that i never got over so uh, that's the best way I can describe it. So, and I'm, without Mom's getting... good at staying very relevant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, without getting too deep into it. Um... And she's, a, she's a cool mom. Like, we go p places and stuff, and they're like, oh, my God, is that your sister? And so it's, like, <laughs> cool. Like, that's the type of mom I'd want to be, where it's like, is that your sister? But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's... Uh, no, I think it's... At the end of the day, I think it's having that relationship with your kids and your wife, and everyone's, like, you guys can be open communication and uh 
it's kind of like you guys are all friends without you just can't have jealousy you just can't have like oh like you just everyone has to be able to give um james tate uh to be one on a business point a uh, business relationship to be an owner or have a business partner how do you have enough trust that they won't screw you know that in business anyone can screw you at any time okay and, you know and i've had very very tough business partners that have taught me very like many lessons okay i've had the worst of the worst to the best of the best and so I've had one, you know, a few relationships that taught me a lot, you know, at the end of the day, you got to be, you got to, I hate to say it, it's hard to trust anyone in business, to be honest. I grew up with a handshake deal in Nebraska. You trusted everyone. Came to California, got screwed a bunch of times, you know, and business. Went to the racing world, stock car world, even worse. A race, stock car, racing world. Hey, be careful. <laughs> yeah, be careful. At the end of the day. Whenever there's high money involved in any type of sports or business, things get a little, little, um, you got to watch your back. That's just the way it is, okay? And that's how life is too. I'm just being brutally honest, okay? So in business, what I learned in business was quit doing handshake deals. That's not, it's just not disrespectful, but it's the facts. You use contracts. You use good lawyer, a good business lawyer. Get a good contract that you both can agree on. Sign that contract. You can always go back to the contract to, with the guidelines of how things should be if things go squirrely. That way, you don't really ever, can't really get screwed on business deals that way too bad. So that's my opinion. Um, uh, so your tip, <laughs> Ethan Martinez. So your tip is to find the hottest wife, right? <laughs> um, I don't know. You guys asked. That's my. You guys asked looks how we met. Looks can take you so far. Yeah. When you have to deal with the person every single day, yeah. it's more than looks. Yeah, and you know what? At the end of the day, you got to be willing. If you, you know, say you guys got in an accident, or she or you got in a crash, and it, your looks were gone. You got to be okay with that. You got to know that you guys are married, become one as a bond forever, okay? You got to be okay with through sickness and health. Um, no, so no, Ethan Martinez, no, it's not. That was just my situation, you guys asked. Uh, when are y'all coming back to NC? I'm not sure. Um, uh, Kaden Games, yeah, you got to watch the documentary. It explains all that. Um, you have her dating on <laughs> Andrea Messer. Uh, no, probably not. Um, so, how do you, so yeah, I'd say <laughs> no, I would never, I wouldn't want my daughter dating someone like how we were driving right, when we were in, uh, doing freestyle motocross and dirt bike because we weren't, we were just rebel dudes like messing around. So, whatever, just kidding. I'm All right, not, you're not touching. Uh, don't would touch you it. ever no, consider? Don't touch it. No. Uh, I'm gonna kick you. So, why is your wife? Watch. Uh, why is your wife, Dennis Cortez, she is on camera. She's always working. Because she's always busy cleaning or... It's not even, not like necessarily like work, like she has to do it, she wants to do it. She wants to clean out every cabinet. Like I left for two days and all of a sudden, I told her, I was like, don't worry about cleaning out like my bedroom or whatever. She goes, wipes out my entire bedroom, cleans everything, gives it like all away. <laughs> and she just, she likes to constantly be doing stuff. Yeah, so she's bu always busy, like, doing things. She doesn't really feel like sitting down and talking too much, <laughs> to be no. honest. Um, so, uh, 41 Fishing, what's up? First bike was a Honda 50. Uh, what else? Uh, this is pretty generic. Jo John Doe, we'll let that one pass. How do you, how do you build, oh, here's a good one. Uh, Gary B Bergstresser. How do you build a relationship between uh -huh. driver and crew and the crew? How do you build trust with the driver and the crew? I feel like <laughs> my hair. <laughs> um, I feel like when pairing up with the crew chief, it's been extra hard for me just because a lot of you figure a lot of like older men, they don't have a lot of faith in like a girl coming up in the ranks and like what what she's saying is true. And so that's been a little bit of a struggle for me, but I feel like I finally have earned the respect of the crew guys and what they think of me and of my capabilities. And so once I proved myself that I could do good, then it started, the respect started coming. But having that relationship, it's always talking to them. It's always it's just building a personal connection. It's like having a sponsor deal or anything like that too. Okay. So yeah. Uh... 
right, so all right, Jay Osbeck, what's up? He said, since uh, Dale Sr. has passed, I finally have someone to follow. Haley is my new intimidator. Second at Daytona, you move through the field like you've had a dad that does the same. Great show in the bloodlines. Thanks. Um, so, yeah, um, I think the aggressive racing just comes from a dirt background, from racing off-road trucks. If you want to see aggressive racing, go to Lucas Oil Short Course Races. Yeah. I watched some of Haley's videos where her and her friends were just totally demolishing each other. It's funny because they're my best friends too. Like we go and hang out every single weekend, but we will absolutely kill each other on the track. It's so much fun. And then after we just like laugh about it. <laughs> um, let's see. How, Christian Adams, how's your relationship with the militia? Still talk to him all the time. But like I said, my number one focus right now is my family. It's pretty obvious. Uh, uh, Alex Benzik. So what's your favorite memory with your kids? I don't know. That's a tough one. There's a lot of them, a ton of them. So I would say when they have accomplished... The day Haley was born. <laughs> <laughs> I say the, uh, when they've accomplished their biggest goals, you know, when they have... I've been there when they have all accomplished their largest goals. So that was big to me. Um, what's your... No, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... So, oops. Oh, did you mute, mute it again? Did that's it what you mute did. it? That's what you did last time. I think they still hear me. Um, do you... Let's see. She's gorgeous. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Let's see. Do you ever... Michael Erickson, do you ever get sick of the limelight? I think if I did, I think if we got sick of the limelight, we would... Um, I'd become more invisible, right? I would not be on social, I would hide out, I would, which is not hard to do anymore. Like literally I could shut off my phone and shut off all my stuff and bail out in our house in, in North Carolina is in the woods away from everyone. If I wanted to, I could go off the radar for sure. Like I know how to do that. Like, but that's not where I'm at, at this point in my life. So um, I'm at this point of like, I feel like I've learned a lot through my life, through uh, parenting and racing and, um, Still learning a lot has to do with faith. That's something I want to be better at um, and surround myself with more of the, that type of people and community. But um, I feel like I have a lot to share. I feel like I spent, you know, 10, 20 years of my life being this rebel dirt bike guy. I've always just kind of take, take, take. And I feel like this is my point of life where I feel like I can kind of share my experiences. Um, let's see. Um... Why is my number not 38? This ain't a relationship question, but uh, in NASCAR, how it works, the teams own the numbers, and you kind of just get placed with a number. So I thought number four was pretty cool. Is I had the choice between four and 17. Yeah, so you get so you know in NASCAR you get assigned a number each year. The team owns the number. You don't get to bring in number thirty eight and throw it on the car because the the team owns that number, and that's a different thing with NASCAR for some reason. Like certain teams own their number. Has Haley done any other sports? I was a professional volleyball player. Yeah, All my friends got scholarships. So that's Michael Guerrero. Uh, yeah, she did club volleyball for a while it's pretty good too yeah he came to one game yeah yeah i was sorry i really d i really did not blend very well with the volleyball parents i must say i talked to Chaz pastrana about that too he's like do you ever like think it's really uncomfortable and weird to go to like your kids sports practices you don't like have nothing in common with anyone at all and you're like yeah because all we want to talk about is dirt bikes my weave, Mom. victor dashini where's trigger he's inside the kitchen pooping on the floor um so ryan day yes it, youtube let's be honest youtube is a business right it's like any other thing all social media is at the end of the day right so but i enjoy this platform to me i enjoy it so otherwise i wouldn't do it i could do many other things um <laughs> it's fuzz one on fun whatever what's your best pickup lines i don't think there is a pickup line i think it's just being confident right not cocky like trying you know, there goes mom real quick there's your shot <laughs> so uh she's busy working she probably, yeah she probably bought some cactuses had them delivered to the front gate so you could see them yeah <laughs> she's gonna grab them right now and sneak around back <laughs> so um, she's got a cactus addiction yeah she loves the cactus uh plants all around here uh let's see how many daughter and sons um 
Having daughter. So, all right, let's see. Jacob Estrin. Let's see. He says, how do you feel over... Do you feel overprotected of your daughter meeting guys or you let her go meet guys when she feels like it? I don't know. I think um, we try to guide with common sense. But at um, the end of the day, yeah, we're overprotective. We're parents, man. I, I know. I've been – I was a young guy. I know the deal, right? I ain't stupid. Like when I see someone that's like that has good intentions, then no, I'm not so stressed about it, right? Cole Keats. But people can be <laughs> respectful. If you're blowing up a phone at midnight or 1 in the morning, dude – Get out of here. Like, I know the game, dude. Like, I've been there. So, be respectful. And I did. Literally, I'm, yeah, I'm, like, I talked to Twitch about it, too. He has a teenage daughter. <laughs> he, he, he thinks the same way, dude. Trust me. Like, the years of us being rebel dirt bike guys and, and basically getting gnarly, that was real stuff. <laughs> so, let's say we, we, we will protect our kids. That I'll just tell you that right now. Um... My daughter turned B dub 18 in February. The dating subject is hard as a dad to talk about with my daughter, but my daughter surprised me how mature she is. And I think that's, <laughs> that's good because you, you can, it's better to have a relationship. It's tough to talk about it for sure, but um, it's better to have that open relationship instead of just being so embarrassed that everyone's hiding it, right? Everything's sneaky. And uh, that's not the way, like that's not the right way to do it. Um, when I met you two at Talladega last week, I enjoyed it. It's right? signature, memorable material. Um, invite you guys. Uh, how, how many, uh, that's funny. How many push-ups can I do? Probably, I don't know, 50? <laughs> I'm guessing. Uh, what is the best... What is the best time you spend with your kids? All the time, really. Everything we do. Um, Especially now see. we're stuck at home. It's all the time. <laughs> Uh, Victor Dechini, what is your number one outing after coronavirus is gone or moves or chills out? Um, I would say, I don't know, we'll probably go back to the races, right? That's what we do. That's what we do. Um, <laughs> do you, what kind of question is that? Um, Adrian Birchfield. No, the thing is, I used to think that growing up as a young kid, I'm like, oh, I wonder if my parents like me the best or like, I'm, I'm good. I'm the best kid at sports or this, that. It's not Hudson a, like everyone likes it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Hudson the, the, calls himself the golden child. Yeah, yeah. I've never met a kid, or I've never met anyone so confident as Hudson. The problem is, look it up. It's the same across all the fields. The oldest kid's going to act a certain way, and the youngest is going to. Youngest is always going to be the baby and always get baby, always get his way. That's just kind of the way it is. But hey, that's just life. And no, as a parent, you love all your kids the same. That's it. That's just how the, it works as a parent. Um, you know, there's, you know, it's like, like Hayden, I did put the most time into Hayden because I love motocross. So yeah, I did put the most time into him, but all the kids, I have the same, um, love for all the kids. Um, what advice do you have for parents? I don't understand. That's very too vague. Spilled up by me. My advice to parents in general though, parents, is so. probably spend your, the time with the kids, whether it's like, it doesn't always have to be something crazy and fun. I think in general, it's just being there and spending time with them. That's it. And the goal is one day your kids, when they get older, still want to hang out with you. Is you know, like to me, when I got older, I'm like, oh man, I can't wait to leave home. But um, now, like my dad calls me every day, all the time, and you know, and and as a parent now, I'm like, man, I want to be, I want my kids to like want to talk to me every day and not like put me to voicemail, you know. So it's just about spending if I time. Put you to voicemail. If I if I don't answer mom's call within like a second. Or say I don't call her back instantly, she'll call me like 15 times. She <laughs> yeah. texts me 15 times. Yeah, yeah. 15 exclamation marks. I'm like, Mom, <laughs> I literally was just taking a shower. <laughs> yeah. I'm in the house. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah, so right on, Jaden, Elise, uh, say what's up. And then we got an air compressor turned on in the background. But uh, Brandon O'Shea, have you ever been rejected? Is that for me or Haley? To me, to be honest, I'd like to say no. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like of course, can... all the time. See, I'm the type of person where if I see things start going south, or like see like it's like you're about to get rejected, I'll reject you first. <laughs> yeah. like, Boop, turned it on you. <laughs> all right, so. <laughs> oh, stop. So, where did Haley? Where did Hudson get his fearless? Um, he just I don't know. Has that personality, right? Um. All right, so we're gonna, uh, we've are gonna. we been on here quite a while answering. I think we've answered a, uh, quite a few good questions here. Um, 
so what else what else here real quick uh what made you pick Haley Hudson and Haley Hayden Hudson and Haley? It's it's actually Hudson. Name. Hudson's the nickname I gave him on Instagram, but it's actually a cool name. I thought we named him H Hudson Hawk. We thought that was for some reason cool. Why was that? <laughs> um, what were we? we were I'll be honest. I didn't have a. I'll be honest. I didn't have a lot of say in naming the kids. I'll be honest. That's kind of a mom thing uh, that moms do. And um and I was fine with that. I'm, I'm glad I didn't have it because I was gonna name Hayden Brian Jr. <laughs> that's how like <laughs> cocky. That's how much ego I have. I would have named him Brian Jr. And I'm so glad I didn't. Like what at the end of the day. And I'm not drunk. saying that's against everyone who's a junior. Um, that's just my opinion to, for my situation. Okay. And I'm glad I did not do that because I, we have enough Brians in this house. Um. So. We already, you already answered that, we, Jeremy. We already answered that. Um, when are you making more beef stew? We don't I, eat. <laughs> I quit eating beef, dude. Uh, for now, I'm trying not to eat red meat anymore. Like I said, if you've been listening to my podcast into my uh, social media, I like I said, heart issues running my family, and I need to get rid of some cholesterol. Okay, so I'm gonna cut out red meat. Uh, Nicholas Walpool keeps saying, why is Haley so pretty? Well, have you seen her dad? <laughs> I do look a lot. I look like you more than I do mom. All right. Those man arms. See, the difference is girls get to spend hours on being pretty. Guys don't get that, right? Guys just, it is what it is. What you it got is it, what it is. What you got is what you got, <laughs> dude. And that's like, is what it is. No, but you can so work I, out. You can be in shape. Exactly. So how do you become attractive as a man? You work on your uh, stature. You, you show, you show, you know, the girls that you're willing to work out, want to put in the time, willing to have discipline. You're going to eat right. You have respect for yourself. And you become confident through working out and through training and through uh, sports or just physical fitness. You gain confidence. Okay. Confidence is attractive to, the, to your partner. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, not cockiness, confidence. Okay. There's a difference. Um, Dude, if someone asks me how many push-ups you can do again, I'm literally I gonna out block today. you. I'm sore. Um, Arms were uh, yesterday. Haley started racing when? I was eight years old. Yeah. You bought me the car. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Dean Rivers, pray for my wife. She works at UF, going through a lot. Yeah, I, you know, like I said, that. Thanks for reminding me. A lot of respect for all the medical uh everyone on the on in the hospital is working right now um i'm like ner like you get nervous to even go out in public and they're like around the sickness every day but they've been doing that for that's their job they've been doing that but it's it's gnarly like it just brings a new light to it of like how gnarly it is like for you know i think a lot of respect a lot of respect for that um a lot of respect uh so nice guy what's up i think we might have went by and missed you i have I have four girls and two boys. Girls are the hardest due to attitude with boys. Boys were chill and easier with girls. <laughs> How about you? I'm just starting to go through this. And um, I'll be honest. I'm kind of glad I have one girl. <laughs> I'd be like... I am like, easy going. My Marisa's family, five girls. Gnarly, okay? And, and her, her dad is so passive and patient. <laughs> and mom talked it had to be. <laughs> Uh, had to be right, and and, a, and Grammy uh, was real stern and strict, which she had she's to be. She's still to this day. Still well, to the day. She like goes, that. she kicks her flip flop off, she grabs it, and she'll hit you with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot crazy. of stories of her whooping ass. So that's good though. <laughs> my mom used to beat my ass too, but I had respect for her because she did that. Okay, like at the end of the day, I didn't back talk her. Like I was respectful because I didn't want to get whooped. You know, so it is what it is. Um, uh, I'd say burnouts. No, go fishing. Video. Uh, wins the next Generals Cup this Saturday night. Uh, so what's up, Silver City Hotshot Fire Crew? Uh, yeah, firefighters. Hey, thanks to you guys for the support. Uh, especially during these times, you guys got to be around, especially the police officers. A lot of respect to that. I feel like. With this, with the new government, or with um, under this new presidency, there's been a lot of respect for the military, a lot of respect for the police force. Um, it's kind of healing that division. Uh, I like to see that. 
Okay, I think we're all one in America, all united as one. Uh, I don't like playing the Republican Democrat thing. I'm not like to me. We are all together in this game as one, right? No division. Remember, divide and conquer. We know that saying, right? As one, you're stronger. There's no weak links in the chain. Okay. Um, all right. So we're almost done here. Are you do a? <laughs> are you gonna do a political political live stream? Um, I don't know. I've had the options of having some political guys come on my podcast and stuff. Uh, but I don't know. I, I, you guys know my style, my views. I don't know if I want to beat it up on everyone. Uh, it's just, all I have to say is my opinion is seek out your own knowledge. Okay. Seek out your own news. Seek, seek. Okay. Don't just sit there and listen to what's on TV. Cause you're going to get fed things and it's going to control your thinking. Um, that's what I've learned over time. Uh, anyway, any more questions? Any more questions? I see, oh, I'm gonna. Someone asked for more color of my hair. I'm gonna bleach my whole head once this quarantine ends. <laughs> bleach it? Yeah, it's gonna be blonde, like all this right. color blonde. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, right on, guys. We are going to jam out. We it's getting cold now. I'm it's hungry. starting, I and and I have to go eat dinner. Um, so. Quad King, I you must be new on here, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, everyone knows I'm Christian. Everyone knows I believe in God. Everyone knows I almost died and the, the story of what happened to me, right? Um, uh, do you, so that's a good question. We'll kind of end with this one. Kimberly Ro, Robles, Robles um, says, do you believe in meeting the right person? Uh, there's some good guy. You know what? I'm gonna probably I'm gonna do a post and show you the top three or four sites I follow that help me, help guide me. And um, there's some good people online. Um, you guys need to read a book by Stephen Arnio. It's uh, Hard Times Make Create Hard Men. That's a great book. You guys should read it. I got it on Audible. I don't really read. I listen to them. Um, there's a few guys. I can't click off this right now. But maybe by tomorrow and the next day, I could give you guys um, a list of pages that I follow that could really help you, um, guide you in the right direction. Uh, at least in a direction of like that I've used to help myself. So Turbo Reef, what's up? Um, there, there's a uh, man. There's so many good people, so many good powerful leaders out there right now that are that are saying the right things, you know. Um, and the one thing I learned over time, too, is more eating, being healthy, eating organic foods, staying away from pesticides and food colorings and sugars. One thing I learned that can really help you with stuff is like you got to study on what you're what you're eating. Uh, and uh, that's why I try to get away from red meats. Um, you cooking with butter. What's up? Um, you know, what? in my opinion, like I said, I believe in the Bible and I feel like all, you know, time heals and and um you, you, like I said, in the Bible, the Bible says forgive, you know, to forgive, you know, for, uh, always forgive. Um, that's it, what I believe in. It's tough sometimes. I get it. I get it, you know? So I'm, some subjects that I just, I don't want to try to get too involved in because it's a lose, kind of be a lose-lose, you know? Um, but I just believe in, you know, like actions speak louder than words. That's my, that's my style. Uh, did Haley, let's see, what made you believe in the Bible, Fritz? Uh, I almost died. If you watch my documentary, you'll see what happened. Um, I was on the surgery table begging for life. That's what happened. Um, unfortunately, that's what it took for me to be fully committed. Uh, anyway, all right, guys. Uh, uh, Thomas Grease Grizzer Jr. No, I didn't see your message. Uh, so, all right, guys. We will catch you hopefully tomorrow. Tomorrow's Saturday. Do you want us to come back on tomorrow or should we wait till Monday? Um, should we wait till Monday? Uh, what do you guys want to uh, cover tomorrow? Huh? What do you guys want to cover tomorrow? If you guys just keep standing there, sitting there saying Haley's hot, I'm still her dad and still have to be protective and like it kind of has bugs. Um, so. All right, you guys want us, today is, is today Thursday or Friday? <laughs> Today's Friday, right? Um, is it? No, today's Thursday. 
Hey, I'm way off. Sorry, guys. This whole Corona issue is throwing me way off. Um, so yeah, so we'll be we'll come back tomorrow. What do you guys want to cover tomorrow? Let me guess, dirt bikes. Uh, what do you guys want to talk about tomorrow? Um, what armor do you wear? Jerseys. I wear uh, all Thor gear, obviously. Um, really? Gee, he wants to. He says Bible study. I'm not. That'd be kind of. I could do it, but um. Friday, okay. <laughs> Alan Lawson, that's a funny one. What if someone likes you and you don't like them? Well, you guys can be friends. Um, let's talk freestyle politics. Hmm, we could we could go that route. A lot of stuffs happened today, right? They're gonna start opening back the uh, economy. We need that. My opinion is we can go in it tomorrow, but man, let's start opening this country up. Right, let's go. Uh, house tour, I don't know. Uh, Deegan 38 dirt bike tires. That's a good idea. I thought about doing that actually. Affordable tire that lasts a long time. That was my opinion. Building a tire that is more for the, the guy who rides for fun. Okay. Um, favorite submission in jujitsu? Ah, we could talk about that. Um, let's see. Deegan double, sip double. Um, let's see. I'm looking at things we were going to talk about tomorrow, some subjects. So, uh, uh, I'm not going to do the house tour. How you tune your race cars. I don't know if I'm going to really do that. Um, let's see. Talk about Australia. <laughs> uh, what else? Let's see. How to teach kids to ride. I can probably do that. Um, how to begin in motocross. Uh, I could probably do that. Uh, what time? Larson, no. Let's talk about the Lord. We could do that. Um, Hayden. I'm just looking at topics here. Uh, teach. You want to really want to talk about that? How to teach kids to ride dirt, dirt bikes. Um, uh, business, hardships of business. Sponsor and gear deals. USA history. <laughs> what do you do besides motocross? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's talk about all your injuries. Uh, hardships in NASCAR. Okay, we got some things. Um, how to keep a successful mindset. I like that. So that one maybe we'll touch on. I think we can do that because I've been through a lot of highs and lows. Um how do you keep your, how do you teach your kids? Um, I, we could do that. I'm going to maybe go through the ABCs of learn, teaching your kid how to ride a dirt bike. Um, okay. Show us maintain your tracks, how to maintain your tracks. I might bore you. Uh, okay. Uh, bike stop. All right. So, all right, man. I appreciate the time. You guys have been awesome logging on. Uh, the business podcast. All right. Hey, if you guys checked out the, the Deegan's um, podcast, please go over, subscribe. We put a lot of time and effort in that to bring a lot of information there. And then um, we will see you guys. And thanks for always supporting shopdeegan38.com. That's our family business. We always appreciate that. And, uh, hey, we're praying for all you guys. Stay healthy. Stay smart. Stay wise. Do your own research. Okay? We appreciate that, and thank you for supporting our family. It means a lot to me. That's why I sit out here and hang out with you guys instead of, like, I could be inside spending family time, so I'm going to go do that. Um, Victor Jashini, favorite movies growing up? I love the 80s movies. I love the old school movies, man. I always, I like, my dad used to actually let me watch, like, Friday the 13th and scary movies, which I wish he didn't. <laughs> kind of scarred me. Um, anyway. All right, guys. We'll catch you next time. Appreciate the time. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. See ya.